60 people work all night to drag the beast a kilometer and a half back to the village. It's over a ton of muscle, power, and killer instinct. The biggest threat to crocodiles here is the growing number of people moving into the crocodile's territory, competing with them for food and space. Competition for fish in the lake could be causing the big croc to seek out new food. In San Marcos, it's found a ready supply. The people throw their garbage, including animal carcasses, in the water. The crocodile has been spotted in the river that runs through the village. Rudy lays down the law. The advice is simple. Don't lure the crocodile into the village with easy meals. It seems to work. There are no further attacks near San Marcos. Instead, the crocodile sets off in a different direction. It's been spotted five kilometers south of Lake Mihaba, and it's about to kill again. Nueva Era is a remote village set back from the marsh. The small stream that flows through it is the sole source of water for 1,300 residents. A 15-meter wooden bridge is the only safe crossing, especially now that the croc is in their creek. It's a long way from home, having swum through a network of rivers and creeks to reach the village from Lake Mihaba. Local farmer Daniel Oxtero has already worked a full day on the land. After dinner, he has to go out fishing, working a double shift to feed a wife and seven children. He doesn't go far. Fishing near the bridge, he's within earshot of his younger sister. Daisy's house overlooks the creek. Even though it was dangerous to be on the creek at night, Daniel had to go fishing so he could buy rice the next day and feed his family. Without knowing it, Daisy hears her brother's final moments. The night that Daniel disappeared at about 9 p.m. p.m. It was that quiet in the village. I felt like I was the only one awake. Then the dog started to bark angrily. And then I heard splashes in the water. Very loud splashes. I was terrified, so I went to bed. The next morning, one of our relatives came to tell me that Daniel had gone missing. Despite repeated attempts to find his body, all that was ever found of Daniel was his boat and his hat. This picture is the only memory we have of Daniel because just before he was killed, his house burned down and everything he owned was destroyed. This was Daniel's house, but it burnt down. He was building another one when he went missing. Daniel's family lost a provider and a much-loved father and son. Of course I miss him. He's my son. 
Perhaps it was fate. He was a fisherman, and maybe this is a fisherman's fate. The fate of Daniel's killer is also sealed. The government in Manila has finally issued a permit to hunt down the rogue crocodile. As long as it's taken alive, there's only one man for the job. Croc legend Ronnie Sue Miller has been hunting nuisance crocodiles for 20 years. This will be his most dangerous mission yet. Members of Daniel's family are eager to show Ronnie to where the attack happened. I really want them to catch that crocodile because I want to see if it ate my brother. I am scared of the big crocodile. We're especially afraid for the children. There are lots of children here. The children don't swim here anymore, but they're in great danger any time they come close to the creek. The water's edge is a favorite hunting ground for crocodiles. They're ambush predators. It's a strategy honed over millions of years. By lowering their heart rate to two beats per minute, they can stay submerged for an hour without breathing, waiting for prey to stray into the strike zone. The attack is sudden and fast. Death can be slow. Crocodile teeth are not for chewing. They're for holding the prey, while the croc uses brute strength to rip it to pieces. They spin to tear off chunks from large prey, the infamous death roll. Smaller prey is shaken to pieces. Ronnie's plan is to use the croc's own preferred hunting strategy to capture it. A morsel of chicken suspended just above the water is an irresistible lure. So that's the principle. One, one, it is grabbed by the crocodile. The, the crocodile will run away, and this will close down. This will cut the, the upper jaw. In Ronnie's experience, a snare is least likely to injure a crocodile. <laughs> So, this is a hard job uh, because we have to make sure that it's uh, we have to capture it alive. Ronnie posts a sentry in a nearby treehouse. Now, it's a waiting game. In the morning, the bait is gone and the trap is torn. A crocodile has done the impossible, snapped the steel cable and escaped. The cable snapped. I think we're dealing with a much bigger crocodile than we expected. Ronnie sets more traps. For the villagers, it's a terrifying wait they find trap after trap in shreds. The croc must be huge. Three weeks later, a trap finally holds. This time, they've got it. Several dozen men strain in a tug of war with a powerful crocodile on the end of their line. The beast is so heavy and so powerful that it takes several hours to haul it in. It's clearly no ordinary crocodile. But it's only when they finally land it that they realize exactly what they're up against. It's immense. 
60 people work all night to drag the beast a kilometer and a half back to the village. It's over a ton of muscle, power, and killer instinct.